Page 120, Scarborough Fair. On this page, they're introducing you to some new time signatures. It doesn't really matter what the time signature is. As long as you understand what the numbers mean, you can figure it out. Now, well, in 3, 8, and 6, 8, well, the bottom number is the 8. So now we're counting eighth notes, not quarter notes. So an eighth note gets a beat. Okay, it doesn't matter. And the 3 or 6, it just simply is there's the equivalent or the same as 3 eighth notes or 6 eighth notes in a measure. Depends on whether you have to count to 3 or you have to count to 6. Ugh. You'll see these a lot. They're quite common. And there's some interesting things about them that we can talk about. They show some patterns. I'm not real big on patterns. You can look at that if you want, but I like to look at the music. So we'll talk about the rhythm when we talk about the music. Now in Scarborough Fair, it's in 3 8 so the eighth note gets a count, and there's the equivalent of three of them. It's like three, four time, except instead of quarter notes, it's eighth notes. One flat, so F major or D minor. Well, we've been studying D minor. This is in D minor. This is one of those ones where when you look at the end of the piece, you'll find, well, what chord does it end on? It's on a D major chord. You say, well, is that D major? No. D major has two sharps. You know, that's not it. What happens is a lot of times, back, in fact, it was normal. It's pretty much expected back in the Middle Ages when pieces were in a minor mode or minor key. They would end it on the parallel major. D minor and D major are parallel to each other because they start on the same note. So they end it on the parallel major, the D major. It's called a Picardi third, not that that's important, but you'll, it's really, it's quite common way long time ago, so don't be surprised if you're playing a piece that's in a minor key, if it happens to end on a major chord, just the one chord at the end. Yeah, they just raise that third up from a minor third to a major third. We haven't had all that yet, but just know that it's, 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 it's what it's called. Big deal. Anyway, it is in D minor. Right hand first. Let's get the notes and the fingering and the rhythm all worked out. Starting at major five, where the right hand starts, you're here if it puts you in this position. I really wish they wouldn't give you all these finger numbers. You, you only need the first one here. It's one, two. Remember, if an eighth note gets a count, then a quarter note gets two counts. Hmm? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and a dotted quarter note is the same as three eighth notes. Hmm? Just, just remember, it's three eighth notes, so it gets three counts. Well, there's three beats in a measure, that works out. And then for measure nine, you got to lift up during the rest, come up here, second finger. So now you're in this position. Don't forget the B flat, it's in the key signature. So it's starting at measure nine. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now it's B natural. And then on measure 13, that A is tied. So you're gonna, when you play the A in measure 12, you're gonna hold it down for five counts. One, two, three, tied, two. One, two. Now measure 16. Fourth finger. That's a stretch, but it's really important you be able to do this. So I encourage you, don't do a lot of this moving around and trying to comp. Just relax. The thumb will move some, and you could, if you have to, you can twist a little bit, but don't go a lot. Just a little bit. Here. And measure 17 is one, two, three, tie, two, three. And they say lift up and just the thumb again. Ah, I don't like to, I don't like that kind of fingering. You gotta use the same finger like that. You can get away with it, and sometimes you have to do it, but I don't use it if I don't have to, and I don't have to here. Mm -hmm. So I can use second finger, and then just reach up with a little finger, and then claps, and I'm in position. So I recommend you do that. On measure 17, you're here, tied, and then when you go on, lift up, use second finger for the D, and then, then here. Now you're ready. Like so. Then for 21, just you just cross over for one note. 
leave your thumb there. The reason is because we want to be in this position. Because sometimes in pieces when you cross over, you can just stay there and you use third finger. We don't want to do that here, so stay there. And then each of these dotted quarter notes, remember, gets three counts each. And the last line, that D and the A are tied forever, but the left hand gets stuff to do until the last measure, and then you get the Picardi third. Isn't that nice? Oh, goody. Left hand. Starting out with D, these primary chords, sort of. Well, this is a D sus4, but this. So three counts each. One, two, three, one. It kind of sets the mood. This is just introduction. See the double bars at the end of the line? That, that's introduction. Now, news, now the piece starts, and it's still the same chords. And that's fine. Go over to page 121 on measure 11. You hear? You have a B natural, and then a here. Measure 17. You just come down one. You have a, a rest, or three beats of rest, to come down. Then lift up and move. That's fine. I mean, there's other fingerings we can use for that, but this is okay. Just do that. Measure 21. Now the thumb's going to reach up each time. And then finally the left hand gets the melody. Two. And then measure 27. It's one, three. If you're doing this okay and you're not struggling too much, then I'll measure 27 on here. I recommend you do a one, two, three on each of those. One, two, three. Because this kind of thing will help you out later on. Whatever. So if you can kind of do it now and kind of get introduced to it, it helps. If you're struggling with this, forget it. Just do the one, three, three. Last measure is a D and an A, but it has an A V eight under it, so you go down an octave. Put the hands together. Well, the start is just left hand, so start a measure five here. One, two, three. One, two, three, one. Work it out, both hands together, and then we go back and we add the articulation. The only articulation here are the slurs for the phrases. So it's musical sentences, and you can follow the words too. So the bottom line on page 120, that's all one phrase. You just connect it. The left hand, connect the left hand as best you can throughout pretty much the whole piece. Just connect it. The right hand, we're going to lift up. But, like on measure 9, well, there's a rest, so that helps you. You have to lift up. And that's all one phrase. Hold the left, on measure on 13, hold the left hand down as you lift up like a breath. Go on. Now here in the left hand, you can do that. And then both hands come up. We're going to connect the right hand. Here. The left hand, lift up between each slur. Just the left hand. Like so. Okay. Then the dynamics. We start out soft. And the left hand is going to stay soft pretty much throughout the whole thing. Keep the left hand in the background until the bottom at the page 121 where it gets melody, then you can bring it out a little bit. Right hand when it comes in is sort of soft. So whatever you think sort of soft is, the left hand has to stay background. Now on measure nine you in the left and the right hand you come up a little bit. Up there, just not a lot. It's just it just go up a little bit. Oh, no. The left hand stay back. And then come back down. The left hand there 
is like soft or very soft. That's for measures 12 and 13. And then go back up to medium, medium loud in the right hand. Stay soft in the left. Now here on measure 18, you can play that sort of medium soft. Make sure the E is softer than the G. Sort of listen to the right, that, that note, and don't overpower it. We want to hear that C all the way through. And then, now we're back to moderately soft. In the right hand, the left hand is very soft. And measure 21, you're going to go down to soft in the right hand. Here, the left hand has to get very soft here. I don't know if it's an error or what they're after here exactly because on measure 25 they have a decrescendo to get softer. You're already soft. You're going down into very soft and then all of a sudden you're, you're moderately loud. That's rather unmusical. I, I don't know if I like that or not. So starting at measure 22. we can do here in this case is the right hand is getting softer so when you get to measure 26 play the, the right hand soft just go on down and make the left hand moderately loud all of a sudden so measure 25 is here because the left hand is really soft now just let the left hand come up I think that may be an error though on measure 26. I think that probably should be a moderately soft. Because I don't see any reason to come up that much. Because even in the middle there on that line, they want you to crescendo up a little bit. That would make it going up to loud and come back down. This piece is not loud anywhere. So I think that really should be a moderately soft. And you can do it in both hands here. Because the right hand, once you play that, it's just going to die away. I mean, it's got four measures of there to die away. So that's fine. Let it. On uh, the first one, it can be up, same as the left hand. But now the left hand is moderately soft. Come up to moderately loud. Ba -da 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 and then retardando, slow down a little bit, and then you have a soft at the end. Both hands together. That's my opinion of what we can do there on that last line. But I don't know if I explained that very well or not. So to recap of what I just said, because I'm not sure I explained it very well. Starting at measure 22, you're soft. The left hand's been very soft. Stay there. And then die away. Get rid and then on measure 26, the right hand's soft. And the left hand can be start it sort of moderately soft then get a little louder and then slow down there one two three and then soft for both hands at the end that's all that's my impression speed wise you can find recordings of this if you're going to sing it how it's not a fast piece and again we're counting eighth notes here one two three want to feel that three beats so forth somewhere in there you'll have to decide on I play at a different speed every time I play it so it's just depends on how I feel it then on top of that they've added pedal you don't really need pedal in this piece I think it sounds fine without it but let's talk about the pedal it'll connect things it connects these chords because we can't connect them otherwise and it adds the overtones, which is nice. The problem is it'll smear things, and this is not a fast piece, so whoever's listening has time to hear the smear. No. It's going to be overlapping pedal, so that notes go down before the pedal. At the beginning, you're here, notes, and then pedal. I'm going to change the pedal after I play the notes each time. So it overlaps just a little bit. Same thing here. that I don't really care for that 
If you would like to adjust that a little bit, go right ahead. It's, there's different ways you can adjust this. You can go, pedal the first two beats and then lift it up after you play the F. The problem is we want to connect here. We want to connect that. So if you're going to do that, you got to put it down after you play the E. And then change it again there. All I'm doing is I'm, I'm like lifting it up on the second beat, I guess. And it just takes out the blur. All right, go on. Same thing here. If I want, I just lift it up on the second beat. Now here I measure twelve. I lift it up. I just lift it up here. I don't need it. Lift it up on the second beat and leave it up. I don't need it. In measure thirteen. I don't need it. Unless I want to connect the left hand, if I want to connect the left hand, I have to push it down after I play the eighth note. And for measure 16, I wouldn't pedal that. Let those be by themselves, because they're showing run it together. That's what they're showing, and I think that's ugly. Blech. So I would lift it up on measure 15. Lift it up with the left hand. And I don't push it down again until I play the C in the right hand. Right there. And then here, lift both hands up so we hear a little breath. A little silence. And measure 21, finally they show don't pedal it. the pedal and the hands come up together. Now I've complicated that pedal a little bit so it depends if you're struggling with this just do what they're telling you to do in the book. Otherwise you can get rid of these blurriness maybe by lifting it up for one eighth note. Just one eighth note is all it takes to get rid of the junk and then you can continue on. But you want to pedal between these chords. Now when I'm playing a piece and I just want to connect the chords I usually don't pedal until right before the change. For instance, at the first line here, I don't pedal until right before I need to lift my hand up for the next chord. So I'm just pedaling the change up for the chord. That's where I want a clean sound, but I want legato chords. I do it that way. And sometimes we want to connect the chords in this piece, but we don't want the mushiness with a, we don't want smearing all that together. Well, you have to make a decision. It ultimately it depends on you and what you like to hear. Because everything I tell you in pedaling is a suggestion. All the stuff in the book is a suggestion. The only requirement would be if you happen to have a teacher and they're telling you to pedal it a certain way, pedal it as they're telling you to pedal it while they're your teacher. Once they're gone, then another teacher may say something else, or ultimately you have to decide how you want to pedal it. And you will decide based on your habits. And what you're accustomed to. Favorable Burl is a lot of stuff. That's one thing I don't care about the favorite books is their pedaling is very sloppy. They just, and that teaches you to hear the sloppiness and say, oh, that's okay. No, it's not okay. You need to try and listen very carefully, and we don't want a lot of extra blurring unless that's the atmosphere of the piece. Some pieces intentionally want to be foggy or misty, and that's okay to blur it. This is not one of those pieces. We want a fairly clean piece here, but we want the legato and the overtones, the color. So we have to adjust things and try and balance things out with the pedal to get what we want as far as the color and the legato, but not smear it too much.
Now if I play this 10 times, I'll play it different every time. So don't copy me. You make it yours. You get comfortable enough with the notes and everything going on, yet you're listening to the sound. Listen to this melody. You can kind of come up a little and then come down. You can, generally you shape the phrases anyway, which means you come down at the end of a phrase. It's an interpretation thing. There's nothing in the music going to tell you to do that. You just do it. They're telling you to come down. Well, you do it anyway. It's end of a phrase. So forth. And then the introduction. The metal notes, what's changing. Can you bring that out a little bit? Can you play one note louder in a chord than another? That's kind of hard, but it's something to strive for eventually. And until the melody comes in, keep you entertained. I like to play this very slowly, and let's check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do any dynamics, so I'll give us three counts. Now let's just try it together. One, ready, go. Two, three. Three, one, two, three, hold, two, three, 